Okay, hello. Uh, my name's Sam. Uh, working with Cliff on this project. Um, I am the uh, chief aerospace engineer for SolidWorks Zen. And um, a little bit about me, I'm currently a uh, aerospace student at Missouri S&T in Rolla, Missouri. Uh, I'm a team leader of several design teams there and all that jazz. Uh, this is what we are making, specifically the wing section. Um, I have already made the model, just to make sure I, you know, knew what I was doing before I came on here and wasted everyone's time. And this is what it looks like. I mean, it's a little plain looking, but you don't want anything too crazy if you're going to CNC mill it. Um, everything has the correct airfoils. Uh, and I'll show you how I got airfoils in here because most people don't know how to get airfoils in SolidWorks which is uh, it's kind of tedious but that's just the way it is uh, I put a uh, about a two degree washout angle in I don't know if you can really see that but uh, and everything's tapered around the quarter cord and uh, so yeah fuselage will go right through there all the control surfaces are to size. The flaps are down here. I looked into it, and it looks like the flaps are like a skin flap, and they're not. Here, I'll show the lines. They're not like big, huge flaps. They're kind of like just sheet metal that pops down. <coughs> so, anyway. This is uh, kind of a big process. So, we will just dive into it. So to start out with, I'm going to uh, just make a new part. I need, here's what I need, I need something to reference. So I have this, uh, this picture in my downloads, it's a PDF that uh, I was given. It's like just a regular three view of the entire plane. and. Uh, thing with PDFs in SOLIDWORKS is you can't use PDFs in SOLIDWORKS so I had to go online and trans and convert it into a JPEG which just Google PDF to JPEG it's a really simple free online conversion they email you the file after you upload it but what I'm going to use this for is I'm going to um, scale it to the correct scale so they have a uh, can't really see my mouse uh, Oops. Well, there's there's a scale over here. Uh, I'll show it in SolidWorks. You can see my mouse in there. But to get this in SolidWorks, I had to get it as a JPEG, which uh, is right here after I converted it. So there's that. Um, but to get it into SolidWorks, we need to make a new part and a new sketch on the part. We'll do uh, top. Uh, and then we go to tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. It's kind of hidden. Most people can't really find it that easily. And we will just choose our file. Okay, and here's our picture. Uh, now this is not to scale right now. And uh, what this little blue line you see here is is it's a uh, it's a tool that you get to use to scale. So if we come down here and uh, just put that there and we'll span it across the whole 10 because that will allow us to make a more accurate measurement with less air. So that needs to be 10 feet because I'm guessing this was made in America with the dreaded imperial units. Um, I'm gonna try and get rid of a little bit of the tilt over here. You can just do that. Yeah, yeah minus one looks good. And then uh, we'll make it a little bit transparent just because uh, that allows me to see the lines that I draw on top of it. So there we go. Um, what I'm gonna do to start 
is uh, get the airfoils in because you can't make anything without airfoils. So whenever I make an airfoil in SolidWorks, uh, I know a lot of people have paid for DXF makers, but uh, even those aren't quite as versatile as, uh, as what, I'm, what I do. So I uh, come over here. It's a uh, it's it's just like a big, huge online database supplied by uh, UIUC and it's Chicago. Um, they just have a huge database of every kind of file you could possibly, every kind of airfoil you could think of, of, and they have a uh, you know GIF pictures of. Yeah, my internet's gonna be really so. They have GIF pictures and all that jazz. So yeah, they'll give you a GIF picture. But what I'm interested in getting is, uh, I'll go ahead and find the NACA. We am looking for the NACA 23018. So, the NACA 23018. So, just for reference, the GIF looks like that. It's kind of an ugly looking airfoil, in my opinion, but that's, uh, that's just me. What I'm interested in is this data file, which has just a bunch of uh, points in them. And what we're going to do is plot a curve with these points in SolidWorks, and that'll give us our uh, that'll give us our um, our airfoil. So luckily, or I guess unluckily, we have to uh, make some modifications to that in order for it to work. I'll get to my directory. And the NACA files. No airfoils. Okay, and so um, <laughs> we were doing a 23018. So I have the uh, the DAT file right here. I think I just downloaded. Uh, what we need to do is uh, get rid of this header. We need to uh, put a whole another column of zeros on the outside because this is our X point our y point and then over here will be our z point and we need to add that which would be awful to do it by hand so we come over to this lovely tool called excel albeit it's windows 8 excel so it's not quite as nice but we get through it so um you want to go to open go to your directory and go to all files because it won't show up because it's not an Excel file. And I have uh, the DAT file right here. And so go to that, go to open, and then it'll ask you how you want to delimitate it. And delimitating means how you want to split it up. And I'll give you a, uh, a reference down here. So you want to do delimitated, click next. And since uh, all of the DAT files are separated by a tab, which is just a space, click space. And you'll see that now it's uh, split it all up into columns. Click next, and you want to tap general and finish. And here we are. So come up here, select that row, delete it. Over here, zeros, and fill it down to there. And now we go to uh, file, save as save in the directory and um, I'll just uh, save it as you know extra because I already have it you want to save it as a formatted text with space delimited because that's how uh, they made the dot files with just a formatted space delimited text file so click save and then just say yes it's asking you stupid questions and if you come over here into the part file uh, directory, you'll see it saved it as a .prn, which is an Excel type file. So just uh, rename it as a text file. And I'll say, do you want to change it? Because after you change it, you can't use it in Excel anymore. And yes, you want to change it. Uh, and I have it open in Excel. So I have to exit out. There's an Excel file. No need to save it. Rename it as a TXT. And yes.
this. Okay, so now we have our text document. Uh, we'll come over here, we'll make a new part. Uh, features come to curves and curve through XYZ points. So now you can probably see what I'm getting at. Uh, go to disk, Cessna, airfoils. Come down to file type text files, and here's the uh, extra file I just made. And you see it fills out the spreadsheet in here, and click OK. And it shows nothing because it's so small right now. But there's our airfoil. It typically doesn't on the front plane. So, uh, one thing to be careful of is sometimes they don't fill in the back over here. And uh, to fix that, just, um, well, the first thing to do, I guess, is to uh, make a sketch on the front plane because this curve, as it is, is not very uh, user friendly. You can't really do anything with it. So, uh, do a sketch on the front plane and convert and select the curve. Check OK. And uh, just to keep things clean and uh, kind of independent of each other, because sometimes it gets crazy, delete that relationship. Because then, whenever you exit the sketch, you can delete the curve. And now, if you happen to edit your files or delete a file, it's not going to erase itself. So come back into the sketch, and we want to fill this in, because obviously right now it is not a... Um, it's not a solid sketch, so you can't do an extrusion or loft or anything with it. So just make a uh, triangle, come in and make it tangent, so that it uh, at least looks oops, at least looks like it kind of belongs. Okay, and so there's that. Now um, we need to find a way of measuring the angle of attack and the cord length. So we do that by uh, making two vertical uh, construction lines. And put them tangent to the airfoil. or coincident, which, since this is a point. And then um, just for keeping everything nice and centered, it's hard to get it to match right up to the intersection, so put it on the um, on the construction line first, and then hold down shift and select the other one, the uh, actual airfoil, and that puts it right on the intersection. And then we want to put that point directly on top of our origin so that then we know we have a nice fixed spot so that everything is nice and defined and then we want to put a cord construction line from the furthest most point to the furthest back point and we want to make that horizontal so that we have a good base uh, angle of attack. And you'll see that our cord length is 1 because the, if you remember, the DAT file was in percentages. So 1 was uh, where it started and ended, which is just kind of a helpful tip. But obviously, the cord length on the real plane is not 1. So we'll just exit out of the sketch, and this is where this um, this scaled up overlay, uh, just just uh, for reference, uh, the way I'm going to make this plane is I'm going to make it life size and then go into each part and scale it down by uh, you know a factor, and uh, that way we don't get caught up with conversions in the middle and we'll, we'll it'll just be cleaner. Um, so anyway, I forgot they. Uh, gave us these nifty little um, cord links here. So uh, since the airfoil we're working on right now is the base airfoil, it's 
5.82 feet. So we come over to our uh, hair for all drying sketch. And I have it in millimeters right now, but the nifty thing about SolidWorks is you can do 5.82 feet. And it scales it up proportionally and exit out of that sketch. Um, now the uh, the key here is, and this is kind of a higher level uh, process, but it works really, really nicely. Um, we want to save this sketch as a uh, independent sketch file that we can then import into a uh, another part because our our wing is made out of three different airfoils. So we'll make um, three separated planes and then do a loft between all three of them. And um, doing this process three times inside of the same part would be just horrible. So I want to keep them all independent. And to do that, you go to Tools, Blocks, because it's, it's, it's called a block. So you got to select the sketch, Tools, Block, Save. And then I've already gone through and I've, or no, that's my, that's my uh, engine nozzle. And airfoils, I've already got the three files saved. Uh, I'm not going to go through this process for all three of the files just because it's boring and monotonous. I will go through and, um, actually I'm, I'm thinking I probably should go through them all because each one was a little bit different, had its own little quirkiness to it. But, um, so yeah, you just save it as as a, uh, it's called a SOLIDWORKS block. Save it. I'm not going to save it because I don't need to. But, um, so then there's that. Now we, I'll just go through and, uh, show you the other two airfoils as quickly as I can. Uh, coming back into Excel. I don't know why it opens up so small. We'll go to Here we go. Okay, and this one, you'll notice, uh, you know, we have the name, we'll delete that. These dots, you know, what are these dots? Well, they are dots, so we'll put zeros there instead. Um, now the problem with this is it's gonna put two points on each, uh, on the zero, zero, so we're gonna delete one in a row. And um, I don't really know why this one had parentheses, so I just took them off, and it worked fine. And uh, oops. And obviously, 100 was not right. So I mean, sometimes they are not entirely accurate. But uh, so there we go, and you uh, save it as a. Uh, formatted text and all that jazz and then you come in here and new part features curves 3xyz browse I already have them kind of made up so we'll go to the 15 edited open okay medium extends and there is our curve. It's a little bit of a better looking airfoil in my opinion. You'll notice this one closes itself up with a uh, curve, which is different from the other one that we had to uh, edit. <coughs> so, do the same thing. We'll sketch on the front, convert entities, convert the entire curve, delete the relationship to the original curve, exit sketch, and delete the curve. Then we'll come back into the sketch because we got to put the, uh, the cord links in and, and such.
Yeah, it's gonna, you know, jump around a little bit on us just because it's, uh, it's currently floating in space freely. So we'll put our point here so that we can have something to put our angle of attack cord line on. That coincident. This will all shape up here in a second. And it'll be beautiful. Like that. Horizontal. There we go. And then put this on our origin. Yep, aerospace engineering is a uh, difficult field to cat in, that is for sure. And I think we need to be 5.82 feet again. And there we go. There's uh, the next one. So we will uh, do a select the sketch, tools, blocks, save, and uh, save it in a directory that you feel fit, such as airfoils with the name that works. So, um,. I'm not going to save it because it would be a waste of time. And for the last one, it was uh, kind of the last one was a little less less user friendly. Um, I had to. Uh, they didn't have the NACA twenty three zero zero nine on this website, so I just tapped in, typed in, you know, NACA twenty three zero zero nine that, and uh, you know first place had it right there you just downloaded that file now this one had a little bit of a different uh, format to their file so save as There it is. Open. Shift positions here. Next, space eliminated. Finish. And so this one kind of has a little bit of a uh, different look to it. So, and delete the header, delete this row that doesn't need to be here. And then uh, fill it out with zeros. One thing about this one is it has a lot more data to it. And then um, one thing I noticed is SolidWorks, you know, this is like six decimal plates accuracy. And uh, SolidWorks doesn't need that much and it just slows it down. So I come up to number and uh, number and we'll make decimal plates like four. And that's plenty good. And uh, file, save as, airfoils, save as a copy of my current one, and uh, save it as formatted, formatted, save, yes, and then the weird thing, I, I don't know if it'll do it again. It would, uh, it gave me a little bit of lip. And I had to go through and just. Oops, I can't. Gotta X out of Excel. Change it to. TXT. Yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it kept it all formatted. So, we don't need to do anything nasty with it which is nice so we'll make a uh, another part that we'll do our sketch on put it on the front nope no we don't we don't do a sketch first we do a curve first browse 
And all files. We'll use the one I made. Okay. And this one is a nice wingtip looking one. So, sketch on the front plane. Convert the curve, delete the relationship, check the endpoints, and you will realize oh no, it didn't work. So, we gotta come in and do the whole tangent game, which really you could just make it a a semicircle if you really wanted to. I mean, at that fine a detail, it really doesn't matter. You're probably going to hand sand it off anyways. But, um, so exit the sketch. And delete the curve. Okay, and then back into the sketch. Now put our uh, measurement lines in. Make it tangent. Tangent is what I meant. And put the uh, the point. You got to put a point there because you can't really select an intersection. SolidWorks is a little hinky about that. Other CAD programs are a little bit better in that retrospect, but SolidWorks is generally pretty easy to work with. Make that horizontal so that we're all squared away with the world. And even though it looked like it was attached, it uh, most certainly wasn't. So it always doesn't hurt to uh, just move it around and see if it truly is attached or not. And that dimension needs to be three point four six feet. And uh, there we go. Exit sketch. Select the sketch, tools, blocks, save, save it as a block. Um, so I'm going to uh, stop this clip and uh, start next one. We will make the actual uh, wing base.